um let me just start this video by wishing everyone a happy new year and i wish and i pray that 2014 was a good year for everybody because that was my best year to be honest so happy new year and i do apologize that this video is coming late because it was meant to come out yesterday but you know african aunties i had to go over to their houses for lunch so i didn't have time to do it yesterday so happy new year and i am here finally to do this video that i promised to bring out for the new year so thank you guys for being patient with me and um i'm gonna try my best to answer every question that i got today so first of all i'm gonna start off with a quick prayer then i'm gonna say a little about my own walk with christ and then i'm gonna go ahead into answering the questions that i got and thank you to everyone who sent in questions um because I couldn't do this video without the questions. So thank you to everyone for the questions. Um, so yeah, let's begin. Um, Heavenly Father, Lord, I thank you for this day. Because this is the day you have made. And we will rejoice and be glad in it, O oh Lord. I pray, God, that as many people watch this video, that they are blessed. And that they learn a lot from it. And that they seek you. And that as they seek you, O oh Lord, that they will find you in Jesus' name. I pray, Lord, that everything that I say is not from my own knowledge or wisdom, but from you, O oh Lord. And I pray that you speak to as many people today through me, in Jesus' name. Amen. So, I'm just going to go ahead and... You know, tell you guys a little bit about my own walk with Christ and um, start answering questions. So, um, as some of you know, I am Sandra Deyemi and I am 20 years old. I, you know, fully decided to take this walk with Christ seriously, like, really gave my life to Christ seriously when I was 19, so basically last year, in January. So, in January, I decided to um, fully give my life to Christ, fully live for Christ, you know fully dedicate myself to Christ and I must say it has not been easy you know throughout the course of, a, of the year but it was worth it all I learned a lot I grew a lot and um, I was able to you know reflect that learning to other people so I thank God um, I don't even truly remember how I really started with Christ but I know that he was at, there at the beginning and he shall surely be there at the end so um, nothing really you know bad happened to me to like you know for me to give my life to christ as it does for most people or something drastic happens it was just like a you know realization that i couldn't do everything i couldn't do this walk do this life on my own by myself i needed god there you know and seeing other people like other people's lives ministered to me my mom's life ministered to me some of my friends and you know, before I gave my life truly to Christ, the first person I ever spoke to was Ella Sunday. And I don't know if you guys know her, but she is my big sister in Christ and she is a wonderful person. So she's the first person I spoke to before I truly decided to, like, you know, give my life to Christ because her life just spoke to me. You know, they say people's lives are stories. Her life was a story. Her writings were stories. And it just spoke to me just like, you know, I want to, you know, be like that. I want to feel that fire for God. I want to be able to, you know, quote scripture like that. I want to be able to read the Bible and understand it. I want to be able to, like, you know, preach to and, you know, teach other people and, you know, teach myself. I want to be able to hear from God. And I wasn't able to do none of that because I wasn't in Christ and I wasn't, you know, and I wasn't understanding why. I just thought, okay, like, am I a bad person? But it's not even about being a bad person. It's about realizing that God is calling you, you know, because He wants to talk to you, but you're not allowing Him to talk to you indirectly because of maybe your actions or your words or the way you're living but he wants to talk to you and i spoke to her and she just made me realize like you know different things just one conversation with her and i was already blessed and i was already like you know inquiring and from, from, from myself and talking to god and praying more so people's lives really do speak to people and her spoke to me and my friends as well you know my other friend sophia who's just always like excited after reading the bible and be like oh look at what we learned this today look at what i read today and you know she's talking to me sometimes i don't even be understanding just be like oh okay you know god is good <laughs> but like i want to be able to understand what she's telling me i'm to be able to know like, feel why she's on fire for god why she's so excited after reading the bible so these people's lives and many others you know from twitter from instagram from real life you know contact and communication made me realize that I needed God, you know. The first thing I did was just go into a room, you know, a quiet room, just cry out to God and just tell God, you know, I'm done trying to do everything by myself. Just come and take over and 
I, I surrender my life onto you. I just, I know I want to know, I want to know you. I want to know your son that you sent to die for me. I just ended up crying. I was in there for like, I think up to an hour, just talking to God. And, you know, it was a process, but I thank God for where I am now. And I thank God for where he's going to take me because he has not been easy, but he makes everything easy because he's always there despite how I feel, despite my emotions, you know, whether I've been unfaithful or not, God is always faithful. That is my little story of how I started, you know, with myself and with my friends and family. And it has been a blessing, you know, to know God to the level, to this extent. It has been a blessing. But, you know, you can never really truly know everything about God. Because even to this day, I'm reading the Bible and I'm just like, wow. Or just in tears of how great God is. So, it's truly a blessing. So... If you see me looking at my phone, it's because I'm trying to look at the questions. So I'm going to get started on answering the questions from Tumblr and Instagram. Because I have to... I can't use my laptop to look at it. So yeah. The first question is from my baby girl. She knows herself anyways. Well, this question is from her. And she said, um, Tell us about what you truly struggle with as a Christian and how you overcome it every day. Do you find yourself in conflict with your faith? And what is the biggest thing God has used you to do that you are so proud of? So, let me start with the first part of this question, which is tell us what you truly struggle with as a Christian and how you could overcome it every day. I struggle with a lot as a Christian. So, let me just make that clear. I struggle with a lot. I struggle with quite a number of stuff. Um, I struggle with doubt. I struggle with fear. I worry a lot. I overthink stuff a lot struggle sometimes with lack of confidence and um god has helped me to overcome the overcome those things because sometimes i just find myself crying or find my, my spirit so i'm um, agitated for reasons i don't even know like it's just like i'm worried over stuff that i shouldn't even be worried about like people tell me like it's never that serious but to me it's always very serious and it makes me scared and when i'm scared or you know when i'm worried it pushes me away from god and i don't want that so the way I overcome it every day, basically, the first thing is through prayer. You know, I pray and I just recite all God's promises back in my head. Right? Like, I recite it over and over again. Like, you know, God should never leave nor forsake me. You know, he left his peace with me. Peace, I live with you. Like, all these promises, like, they'll take you a long way, to be honest. Because they're very encouraging and very uplifting. I just, you know, recite everything over and over again sometimes. Because I want to be able to be bold for Christ and bold for myself. And to be able to speak up when I need to speak up. I just have to trust and have faith. Because when you have faith in God, these things become very small and little to you. So, um... That's just the devil basically trying to creep up into my life and tell me, oh, you can't do this. Oh, God's not going to do this for you. This is too much. Well, nothing is ever too much for God because he's the God of miracles. He's the God of wonders. And he's the one who created all flesh. And nothing is ever too big for God to do. So that's how I overcome it. By prayer, by reciting his promises over my head, and by talking to, you know, Christ-led people who can encourage you and pour into your life as well. Um, what is the biggest thing God has used you to do that you are so proud of? So, I am so proud of this. You know, I'm so happy and grateful about this platform that God has given to me. Like, this platform, like, the social network, the blog, the Instagram, everything that God has allowed me to do. I am very, very grateful for it. And that's, I think that's what I'm most proud of because it's so overwhelming because I never thought anybody would even listen to me in the first place. Like... No people like know people I don't know like are messaging me like oh hey how did you start I want to start oh how did I do this I'm like wow like people are asking me these questions like it's so overwhelming sometimes it takes me a while to answer them some of them I don't even know I have to go back to God who has all the answers you know and ask Him you know open my Bible and read it and make sure I don't say anything out of my own knowledge because my knowledge is very limited but God has all the answers so I have to go back so when you people ask me questions you know it indirectly helps me. Because when you're teaching others, you're also learning. So it's a process. So I think I'm most proud of this problem God's given me, you know, to reach out to other people through social media. Because, you know, if I, I like social media, I've always been one to, like, you know, like social media. You know, use the use this network. Like, this is, you know, a huge platform that, mo that wasn't even available in those days before. But it's available now. Like, use it for the glory of God. Use it for something good. That is exactly what I did. I turned it around, you know. 
I took down everything old that was useless and replaced it with something that was gonna replace that was gonna glorify God. So I'm very happy, I'm very grateful, I'm very you know proud of this platform and what God has used me to do so far. And I'm praying He's only gonna use me to do bigger and better things, you know, with other bigger and better people in Christ. So how do you start a relationship with God? So let me just start by saying that there are no formulas, there are no, you know, steps. Really, it's really starting a relationship with God. It's just like starting a relationship with anybody. The most important thing is communication. Because, like they say all the time, oh, communication is key. You have to communicate. It's a, it's a relationship of any kind, be it friendship, be, you know, dating or whatever. It, it needs communication. It's, it's not a, it's a one-way thing. It's a two-way thing. So, you need to start by communicating with God. Reach out to Him and talk to Him and let Him know. Like, like the first thing I did when I started my relationship with God was just lock myself in the room and just, you know, talk to him and cry. And just cry out to him and just confess everything. Because even in the Bible, in Romans 10, 9, it says that whoever confesses with their mouth the Lord Jesus Christ and whoever believes in their heart that God raised him from the dead shall be saved. And also in verse 13, it said, whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. So just, you know, confess that, you know, Lord... I want to confess you now my Lord and personal Savior. Like, talk to him. Tell him, you know, that I want you to come into my life. I want to change my life, and I want to know you on a level that I've never known you before. I confess that Jesus Christ is my Lord and Savior. I confess that I'm a sinner, and I need you. And he will listen to you. And he will. you will feel like a heavy weight just being lifted off your life, off your body, once you are done talking to him. So just communicate with him. And, you know, if you're wondering how to communicate with God, through prayer, like I just said before, through prayer, you talk to God through prayer. Prayer, permitting God to come, you know, come down and take over your life. You have to talk to him, you know, you talk to God, you have to hear back from him through his word, the Bible. It is, you know, the Bible is has all the answers of life. I'm not one who naturally likes to read books. Like, and I used to count the Bible as one of them books that I did not want to read, to be honest. So that's just the honest truth. Even if I had it, like, I didn't even have, like, a real Bible. Like, I was even given one and I lost it. So, um, reading the Bible, you know, his promises are there. Like, even up to now, I read the Bible and I'm in awe. Like, yo, I read the Bible sometimes, I'm like, okay, okay, okay. And I get to a point, I just stop, I just throw my pen on the floor, I'm just like, really God, like just just so great like so i just start crying because the glory is so much like this is how god reveals his glory to you this is how he speaks to you like even yesterday like just yesterday i opened it was it yesterday or the day before the new year i just opened the word i told god speak to me speak to me as i read this as you read your word today and i haven't even gone far into the bible when he just spoke it was right there like the word, you will fall in love with it, trust me. This is the only book up to now that I would gladly sit down and read and tell you about it. Because it is amazing. And this is how God talks back to you. This is your communication line with Jesus Christ alongside prayer. Now people tell me this a lot, or ask me something about that. You know, I'm not living right, my life is so unholy, I don't think God will listen to me. Let me tell you something. You know, once you are in Christ, as in keyword in Christ, you become a new creation. All things are passed away, all have become new. You become holy or you become a better person with Christ, only by Christ, only in Christ, only through Christ. As in everything they're trying to change on the outside, maybe you know you smoke or some bad habit fornication, it all starts with a relationship with God. It all starts on the inside. Once you are in Christ, or you cannot have a relationship with Christ and still remain the same, there is gonna be a change. Sometimes you, you, you're not even going to know how it happened, but it happened. It's, it's, it starts from the inside. The change has to start from the inside first. It has to start from your heart. It has to start from your mind. Then everything on the outside will flow. Everything on the outside will begin to mirror everything on the inside. Your relationship with Christ. You begin to talk different. You begin to, you know, act different. You dress different. You, you walk different, girl. You walk different with confidence. Everything is going to be different. Because even sometimes now, like things I used to like and enjoy before, I'm looking at like, what is this nonsense? Like, why? why <laughs> like it's going to happen so you don't have to change that like god is calling you to come as you are like he's knocking on the door of your heart you just have to let him in there's no really a rule or a formula to start a relationship with god just let it flow from your heart you know you know 
let your heart really want this because God sees your heart and if you really want a relationship with him just go and talk to him lock yourself in the room pray cry out to him and watch God turn your life around the next question what do you do when you really need something and you pray to God to give it to you but he doesn't you want to know the honest truth I cry <laughs> because that's the first thing that comes to my mind to do cry but then I realized that crying does not change anything it will not change anything it will not move god because god will still do what he wants to do when he wants to do it so i've come to realize that not everything i think i need is what i really need but then god knows what i really need like it's, it's just like your you know your parents like they know that you need to pay your tuition to go to school but then they won't pay of course they will pay like he knows what you need and he's going to give it to you at the right time because god is wonderful and he is the god of all flesh there's nothing too hard for him He's going to do it. You really need something and God knows that you need it. He will definitely give it to you. So have faith and be expectant and keep praying. And you know, once you take your mind off, you know, what you need and start focusing on God, it like it's like reflex. Like he just it just gives it to you. Without, sometimes you don't have to ask. Because you know, Psalm 37 4 says, Let yourself in the Lord, and he shall give you the desires of your heart. Like he knows what you need before you even need them, and he will give it to you. Like even Philippians 4, 19, that says, My God shall supply all your needs according to his riches in glory in Christ Jesus. God's riches, God's glory, they are unlimited. Like, he supply all your needs, not some, not most. Supply all your needs because he knows them and he created the needs for you. Trust me, the stuff I've needed of one I've cried out to God for and they don't give it to me at my time, but he gives it to me at the right time. Like, you know, God is, you know, sometimes... You just when he gives it to you, you just start looking at him like God, thank you, like, like you know, thank you, like at the right time. Most times it might even be last minute, but it gives it to you at the right time because he knows better than we do. You know, he's above. He's looking down on us. He's seen everything. He's seen people that are opposing us. He's seen people that are telling us no. He's seen things that we're asking or applying for and they're being rejected because. You don't you, at that time you don't need it because so many times we think we need things when we really don't. And when he gives you what he wants to give you, you will even be thinking, why did you pray for the other thing in the first place? Why did you even ask for the other thing? The next question: Can you have a boyfriend and also serve God? Yes, you can. You can have a boyfriend or a girlfriend and also still serve God. Now, the only way that's gonna work is if you're both living and serving God individually. Because if you're not doing that and then you come together, there will be no purpose in the relationship. But the Bible also says that do not be unequally yoked with unbelievers. That believers have no business with unbelievers. Light has no business with darkness because the darkness will quench your light. So, you know, especially if you're a girl looking for a guy, make sure he can lead you in Christ. It doesn't take you away through actions, thoughts, through words like... He doesn't drag you down or take you away from God. You guys have to both believe in a Christ individually, you know, living for Christ individually. So that when you come together, it is, you know, it's a powerful couple that is glorifying God. Like, you guys don't even have to speak. People will already see that your relationship is glorifying God. Like, you both are Christ-led. Both have purposes. Both are working in the direction of God. God is the center of the relationship. That's where you get all your answers from, everything from. Because if we don't have God in a relationship, you would do stuff and you think it's okay to do it because you don't even know you know right from wrong you know you can be courting or dating someone and still serve god can you go to parties and also serve god now this was one of the questions that i personally had as well when i was trying to you know when i um, started my walk with god can i go to parties can i you know listen to certain music blah 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 and honestly, this is kind of, these are the kind of questions that a lot of people have opinions on. But then again, let's not look at it like, can I do stuff? You know, can I do this? Can I do that? Do I have to do this? Can I not do that? Let's look at it as, it's whatever we're doing glorifying God. Because we shouldn't, I've come to realize that if you look at things from a checklist point of view, you begin to, you know, get resentful towards your walk or towards other Christians who are I'm preaching against it. Because... I've seen a lot of, you know, other strong Christians you know, like, you know, preaching against party and everything because most of the stuff that are being done there are not glorifying God. You know, the music, the drinking and drunkenness, the, you know, 
type of dancing that's going on in the parties you know most people just go out there for like, some type of high or something i don't i don't know but personally i gave up partying when i started my relationship with god because i realized that i was not going to find god there neither was you know whatever was going on there was going to find god because i'm the kind of person person that loves music and once that beat drops it's all over to be honest so um yeah, I had to, you know, caution myself and I had to be careful and mindful of certain things when I give my life to Christ. So can you pray to, you know, give your life to Christ? I would, first of all, suggest that you pray about it. You know, you pray about it and see where God can fix you on the issue. Because, I mean, I personally don't think I can go to um, clubbing or, you know, stuff like that, those kind of parties and glorify God. I would even feel out of place. Because, you know, I've grown in Christ. I feel out of place. I feel like, what am I doing here? So, there's a lot of stuff you can do for fun. You know, there's skating, there's um, bowling, there's different stuff you can do. So, if you feel, you know, let God convict you personally. And, you know, everybody's doing it. That's fine because that's, you know, the world is making it seem like, oh, it's okay. But everybody's doing it does not mean you have to do it. And everything that seems right does not mean it's beneficial to our lives. Okay, so, next question how far is too far when it comes to doing things with your boyfriend okay so it's funny because i just watched a video like last week by this guy called joe on um chase tv or chase god tv on youtube and he basically answered this question and he was like um um can you you know like, just like I said previously, when it comes to going to parties, like, don't look at it like a checklist, like, oh, can I do this? Can I do that? Look at it like, is this going to find God? You know, there are certain privileges that God, you know, has allowed when it comes to relationships that he has left for marriage. Like, you know, like sex, like people always ask about sex is, you know, a gift from God for married people. And he encourages it in marriage and he, you know, he's happy with it if you're doing it in marriage. But then when you take the context and you twist it out and you do it outside of marriage, then you are not going to find God. In Proverbs, it says, can you hold a fire to your chest and not get burned? Like, people will be like, oh, okay, I can do this, but I can't do that. And the, 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 when you start and the deeper you go, the harder it is to stop. That is an honest truth. The harder it is to stop when you do certain things like... The Bible also says we should flee sexual immorality, not try and then come out. Like, we should flee it completely. Like, we shouldn't even go near it. Talk less of going in it, then coming out. Like, flee sexual immorality. So, when stuff like kissing, you know, when it comes to stuff like kissing again, it's like, oh, okay, so, you know, can I kiss my boyfriend or can I kiss my girlfriend? Is kissing a sin, blah, blah, blah. Kissing in itself is not a sin. You know, like, I don't, you know, there's some people who, like, who can kiss and not be lustful in their hearts or in their mind or think I'm doing extra stuff. And there's some people who cannot. Like, he personally said, he said for himself personally, that he cannot kiss and not be lustful. Like, he will want to go the extra mile. So he just doesn't do it till he's ready to get married. Especially people who have already, like, you know, gone through fornication or pornography or stuff like that, who are still dealing with it or who dealt with it in the past, it can, you know, re what, what can I say? It, it can bring it back it can bring those feelings back and bring those emotions back so you have to know your own strength and also when it comes to knowing your own strength you have to think about the other person as well because the bible also says we should not cause our neighbor to stumble so you may be strong you know when it comes to kissing or like holding hands something like that but the, your partner may not your partner may have dealt with those sexual, you know, immoral stuff in the past or is maybe still dealing with it or you know trying to overcome it and he may not be able to you know, not be lustful after kissing you or want to do extra stuff as well. So you have to consider both sides of the relationship on both parties when it comes to this question. You know, the Bible calls us to be holy in all areas of our life. And be sexual and moral by your thoughts. You know, literally moral by your by your words. Does not necessarily be your actions? So you have to consider all that when it comes to, you know, how far can I go with my boyfriend? How far can I go with my girlfriend? Like, you know, you know your own strength, but you may not know the other person's strength. You know, the person may be thinking stuff when, you, you know, hold your hands or like, you know, just, you know, being lustful in general. The person may be lustful. So you have to know your strength. You have to pray about it. Talk to your partner about it. You know, communication is important when it comes to stuff like this. You know, know your boundaries and talk to your partner about it. And just do everything to the glory of God. Next question. Okay. So this person said, 
Sandra, I love you so much and you're such an inspiration to me. Aw, I love you too. And thank you. All the glory belongs to God, to be very honest. So thank you very much. How did you do it? How did you let go of these worldly things? It's so hard for me to. I fall into sin constantly. Even sin that I've promised God over and over that I won't do. I can't even go back to him to ask for forgiveness because I have too many times that it may just seem routinely to God now. I want to let go and live for God alone. Help me, please. Okay. So, in Romans 7, you know, Romans seven fifteen downwards, it talks about how we want to do the right things, but we end up doing the wrong things instead. Now, when I found that verse, I was like, wow, you know, when I truly say that the Bible has all the answers, I mean it. Because I was thinking, I was like, wow, even, you know, Paul told us in Romans that we, like in our flesh, our flesh is so weak that even when we want to do the right things, we end up doing the wrong things instead. All will fall short of the glory of God. There's no just man that does not sin. We're all going to fall short of the glory of God some point in time. But you have to, you know, when you fall, you have to get back up. That is the life of a believer, the life of a Christian. We don't fall and remain down. You have to get back up. Because that's where the devil wants to have you. He wants to have you down. I think you can't go back to God. God sent his son to die for every single sin we will ever do. Sin that we've done before. Sin that we're going to do. Sin that we're still doing now. So don't ever think that when you've done something wrong, you cannot go back to God as forgiveness. You have to go back to God as forgiveness. And you have to believe through faith that you have been forgiven if not the guilt will still be lingering on the more you spend time reading god's word the more you would you know f feel the need to not do certain things because it will it's you you will begin to hate what god hates try to be conscious like this walk you have to be conscious about your environment about the people you hang around just try to be conscious you know if the thing that keeps triggering you to do it you know is visible or within reach cut it off like don't even go next to it like cut it off completely like just you know don't even allow the thing to come close to you at all because that would just keep making you go back and go back you know set boundaries for yourself talk to yourself consider yourself consider your own heart and talk to and pray to god to give you the strength to you know not keep going back to the same thing over and over and over again you can do all things through christ who strengthens us so god will give you the strength to move forward and move ahead of that thing that's stumbling block in your life that giant in your life you cannot do it by our own power because we will stumble but only through christ the bible also said that no temptation has happened to you that has that is not common to man jesus christ was tempted in the wilderness but he overcame it through the word because he spoke that word back to the devil and the devil disappeared so the bible the word is your weapon is your weapon to fight it against the devil to fight it against sin you know, it's, it's not a sin to be tempted. It's, it's how you handle that temptation. It's how you, whether you go ahead with the temptation or not that, that brings about the sin. Okay, so the last question that I got for this video. How to have and build a godly relationship with the opposite sex? Okay, so I think I kind of answered this before with the relationship or boyfriend question. But just making sure that, you know your life is centered on Christ you know individually so that when you come together there's no clash or there's no problem and you guys already know where you are headed in the direction of Christ so just you know um, pray to God about it before you go deep into any relationship and he will definitely lead you and guide you and guide your heart you would know if someone is really strong and rooted in Christ you know by you know talking to them by the way they live by their behavior everything so you build a relationship with a, a godly relationship with other this thing just by you build it with Christ he's the he's the pillar he's the center he's the one that will guide both of you individually and both of you as a couple so yeah that is um the last question I got for the video so this is the end of our question and answer video and I hope I was able to answer every single question that was sent to me, you know, to the best knowledge and to your satisfaction. And if you still have any other questions, you guys can, you know, ask me on my blog like you already do, my email also that I will, you know, leave for you guys, and my Instagram, both of my Instagrams, which I will also put down below. You can follow them and you can DM me and I will be glad to answer them, you know, better or answer any other questions you may have. I am so grateful 
for this moment that I was able to come and do this and I'm thankful to God that I conquered my fear and nervousness and I pray that as many of you watch this video that you guys will be blessed by it you guys will learn from it and I pray I didn't talk too much and I went straight to the point and answered everything so thank you guys for watching thank you guys for sending in your questions and I pray that you know you will not regret you know, taking the step to follow God. I pray that as you seek him, you shall find him and he will not hide his face from you. And all the answers to your questions, I pray you find in Christ. So, love you guys and thank you. You make me happy. You make me whole. Take the pain away, I'm so in love with you.